Hi guys, I found a really interesting blog post online the other day. It's by a guy called Noah Kagiyama and it's from his uh, site bulletproofmusician.com. I think it's well worth checking out actually. Uh, but anyway, the, the blog post itself that I found interesting was one based on a piece of research by the American Journal of Surgery. And what they were doing was they were researching uh, the nature of practice and they chose three different practice approaches and tried to decide which one gives the best outcomes. So the three approaches were these. One was practicing for a fixed amount of time. The second one was practicing for a fixed number of repetitions. And the third one was practicing to achieve a certain proficiency. So in their case, they were practicing tying surgical knots. So they, the proficiency measure may be, can you tie this knot within three minutes? Uh, can you tie this knot within one millimeter of the target? And can you do it two times in a row, for example? So um, basically, they got a whole load of people together. They taught them the basics of how to tie the knot. They established a baseline there, and then they split them up and had them practicing in one of these three different approaches. And then they measured the outcome afterwards. And, and what they found was, not surprisingly, all three groups improved. They all, they all had incremental improvements just because they were practicing. But the people who were practicing with, for, to achieve a certain proficiency improved significantly more than the other two. And that was the, the really interesting outcome from this. The other one was they all seemed to improve much more uniformly as well. So everyone in that group seemed to have an uplift in their skills much more, more similarly than the, the other groups. The other groups, you'd have some people who'd, who'd improve quite well and others who just fall by the wayside. So that, so that was another interesting outcome. Now, the obvious question is, okay, but, but how much time did each group actually spend doing the practicing? And again, that was really kind of interesting. The people who were practicing for a fixed amount of time practiced for 90 minutes. Um, the people who were practicing for uh, a fixed number of repetitions finished after about 98 minutes. And the people who were practicing to achieve a certain proficiency finished in about 88 minutes, so nearly 90 minutes. So there, there was not that much difference, not that much variance in terms of the amount of time the people spent practicing to achieve proficiency versus the time group. Yet there was this step change in the, in the performance outcomes. So why was this? I mean, the, the, the point they make is um, it, it may well be because the proficiency group uh, established a mastery criteria and then they, they were doing deliberate practice to try and achieve that, that mastery as well. Whereas the other two were about performing repetitions or just performing over a fixed period of time. So much more passive practice than the deliberate practice that the proficiency group had to do. So that's, that's an interesting take home. But I, I found this really useful because it very much reflects the kinds of practice that I do or the practice approaches that I bring to the guitar. And it did make me think that maybe what I should be doing and what I should be getting you guys to do as well is to think much more about what is the outcome you're trying to achieve when you go into the practice room. Start setting some goals and criteria at the start of each practice session and then use those to steer your practice. And, and by, the, by the looks of this study, that seems to pr prove the, the best or, or gives you the best improvement per amount of time that you spend on it. So I found that really kind of interesting. My, my one slight concern was that I didn't know how they were measuring the improvement of all three groups. Because if, if they were measuring improvement based on the same criteria that the proficiency group were, were establishing their criteria as well, so in, in other words, if the proficiency group were practicing the skills knowing how they were going to be measured, whereas the other two groups didn't have that, then obviously they, they're going to achieve much more than the other two groups. 
Um, I don't I don't have access to the original research to know one way or the other. But either way, I thought it was a useful article, food for thought, and definitely something that you may want to think about bringing to your own practice sessions. So hopefully that was useful for you. Um, as always, if this is the type of content that you're interested in, um, then think about subscribing to the channel. I, I try and put original content on the site at least uh, once a week. Um, mainly focused on playing the guitar, mainly focused on things like fingerstyle guitar and the electric guitar, but a lot of the techniques that I put online are applicable across a broad range of styles, a broad range of standards and a broad range of uh, uh, approaches to playing as well. So anyway, as I say, hopefully that was useful for you and we'll chat next time. Goodbye.